Hello everyone, Steven here. Quick um, microscopic update. It turns out I'm uh, very stupid. And uh, someone let me onto a genius idea for how to do the um, decimal to binary conversion. And it turns out I don't actually have one of those things over here, so it's not going to help a whole lot. But basically, if you remember, in the seven segment display tutorials, I believe it was the either the first or maybe the second esopode episode, however the hell you say that word, episode, we did a cool thing like this, where we had all of our decimal numbers here, and our seventh segment outputs were right here. So instead of making seven segment outputs, we're just going to make these the binary outputs. Genius idea. Thank you very much. I can't take any credit for it. This is way easier than what we were going to do. Um, so we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we, zero won't go anywhere. We just won't use it. And, uh, or at least we won't use it over here. And then these are our outputs. It'll be in this order where it's um, eight, four, two, one. Yeah. So this thing is really simple. All you do is uh, for each row, you are going to have to do the binary to decimal conversion. I did the first row already. How do I? There we go. Okay. So this is row number one. So all I did is I put a torch here for one so that when we hit this lever, I, uh, wait, hang on a second. Oh, I killed the lever. How do you use levers in creative mode? Oh, right click. Okay. <laughs> then it will turn on. And I actually have a number lit up back there right now for some reason. Oh, yeah, the 9 is lit up right now. So the 9, remember we said was 8 plus 1. So this is the 8 torch. And then 4, 2 is there. And then 1. So 8 plus 1 gives us 9. And that will light up the... Uh, binary for nine so that's pretty genius uh solution i'm very proud of all those who were a part of it which was not me it was a user by name of one second one second uh duder kaz so thank you duder kaz for your contribution so i'm going to finish this thing off uh, it's pretty simple and then we'll get going on the rest of this Okay guys, so for this part, um, I kind of accidentally lost the audio somehow, and I'm not really sure how that happens, so we're just going to uh, do a voiceover for it. Um, pretty much at this point, I've uh, done some done some work on this. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, walking around, doing something right now. Oh yeah, so this is the new uh, encoder. It does decimal to binary, as you can see. The uh, four white blocks over there represent the um, binary outputs, and the levers are each for a digit one through nine. And we each we also have a dummy digit for zero because it doesn't really do anything because zero plus something is itself, and zero minus something is just negative that thing. You know, pretty easy. Oh, excuse me. And um, so what we'd like to do with this is uh, hook up our display to each of these uh, lever inputs so that we can uh, hit the button, it will decode the decimal into the appropriate binary number, it's pretty simple. And this thing is exactly the same as the old seven segment encoders that I would build, or decoders, whatever. And uh, except that instead of going to seven parts, it's going to four parts, and the four parts are just binary digits. So it's, you know, pretty simple. And so let's take a look at the keypad now, I think. Am I gonna do that? Oh. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So the keypad, um, pretty simple. We got 0 through 9 for the digits. Those are the colored blocks. The diamond is addition, and the gold is subtraction. I put in, uh, like, a row of hatches or whatever so that you can get up and hit the higher buttons easier. Uh, just, you know, make things a little bit simpler. And, um, yeah, so it works pretty good. I'm probably going to take out the hatches, though, because when you push the button, it, uh, well, I guess we'll see when we do it later but it flips the hatch up and it just looks tacky. So This is my little abstract art staircase. It's pretty cool. Just shows you the second level. And I just pwned a hatch. And yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, what am I going to talk about now? What am I going to talk about? Oh yeah, this thing is what I was talking about for selecting which memory module to use. Uh, the left light represents like when it's on A, our first number and the right one would be B, which is the second number. When you hit addition or subtraction, it actually toggles the light like that. We're gonna do this just with a T flip-flop. And uh, so that's pretty, you know, that's pretty simple. 
and um, that'll be how our memory module selects, or sorry, not our memory module, how our um, calculator selects which memory module to write to. And so when that light is on, it just means, okay, we can write to that memory module and stuff. So that's, you know, pretty basic stuff, but really important uh, to make sure that your memory isn't reading or writing at the wrong time. And so at this point, what I'm gonna do is start uh, connecting the keypad to our uh, encoder so that when we hit a button, it automatically will change it from uh, decimal to binary. And I think the part where the volume screwed up is about to be over, so. Okay, so we're gonna um, take these lines down so that we have all of the uh, button outputs in a line that will line up with this. So what we'll end up doing is just moving this over here and rotating it if we need to. I kind of went through and did this and realized I was doing it wrong, so that feels pretty stupid. We're going to actually take these off um, to the left side if you're facing the front, so the numbers are in order when they hit the ground. So this will be one, and it'll be our first number here, and two, three, and so on. And that'll be useful in the long run. We may have to mirror the order that our decoder has, or sorry, encoder has, but that's not the end of the world, as it were. So we can handle that. Our zero button, really? You know, I don't know. If, I guess the only thing that's going to hook up to is like, yeah, I should probably pull that out. I'll just pull it out at the end. I don't really care. We can go at the end. Yeah, so that thing, uh, the only reason we're going to have the zero button, I don't think we even need it, to be honest. Yeah, because like anything plus zero and minus zero is itself. So why the hell do we care if there's a zero or not? All right, zero, you're getting cut out, whatever. Okay, so yeah. Um, before I cut myself off and redid this, I was saying I need a Roboticost to come in and do all the wiring here because he's really good at compacting this stuff and I'm not. So yes, Roboticost, get your butt in my game. I don't remember what I was rambling about before I cut myself off to change this, so maybe I just won't ramble. What? Steven not rambling? Oh my gosh, it's unthinkable. Okay. I'm using um, white wool to make things visible. I probably could use the color wool that each of these are using, but then I'd have to change colors a lot, and I mean, let's be honest, I'm not going to do that, so... I want to keep all these at least one off the ground so the zero wire can come out though. Oops. Maybe I'll actually drop this down to here. Do it like that. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, so yeah, I did do a video on this before. This is going to be slightly different, but probably not too different. Maybe I won't even fin- uh, I should finish it, because said I would do everything or as much as I can on camera here and this isn't a super important part but you know you don't want to leave too much up to your imaginations lest they run wild <laughs> oh yeah and we'll do the repeaters after because I don't care about it right now I realize it's going to be a pain so we'll just deal with that as we come to it but the new repeaters apparently go around corners, so that helps us quite a bit. Okay, so three more. Hooray. Start with this one. This isn't terribly big, I guess. Uh... Oh yeah, I can fly. I forgot. But I'm not going to, for some reason. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Drop this one here, then here, then here. Okay. This is something that's actually, you could 
you could do this part of this thing at, like legit without going into creative mode or whatever, but now that you can go into creative mode, I don't understand why you wouldn't uh, anytime you're you're building really. Uh, it seems pointless to harvest all this redstone, you know? I do remember back in the day, like, people made it a point to make all their redstone crap legit, and it's like, dude, who cares? This is so much material, it's impossible to mine, I'm telling you. It really is. Like, I can't even count how much redstone was in that calculator thing that we made in the old LP. Alright. But I'm glad people still care about this kind of thing. I was afraid they wouldn't. That would be disheartening if the whole community suddenly got stupider. And everybody was like, "Der, what's redstone? But then again, this game is bigger than ever. I've been hearing people talk about it at school and uh, just like in the computer lab and stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, do you ever go to YouTube? And they're like, no, I don't go to YouTube. Why would I go to YouTube for Minecraft? And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> there's this guy you might have heard of. <laughs> Puppies. And, uh, but they, th none of them have ever seen my stuff. Although... Who did I? I met someone that had. I don't know. I guess I'm not that popular. All right. Woohoo! We got all of our lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we'll have the plus and minus that we'll do later. Arr, okay. We'll hook those up to our um, calculator and all that. So now we got to move this other thing. So I'm going to um, do it with world edit, I guess. That's what I'm good at. Okay, so let's try it. Second position. Wait, can I not set for first position with a wooden pickaxe now? We'll see. Expand. Um, let's see here. Do like five, five, up. What? Okay. Now we're going to... Um, we're going to copy it from the, let's see here, from this position right here. And then we want to, um, oops, we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And then if we go stand by the number one position now, hopefully it'll paste it in properly. That was wrong. I think we have to face like this way. Nope. All right, what happened? Oh yeah, okay, so let's rotate our clipboard 180 degrees and then paste it here. Hey, not too bad, huh? <laughs> Check that out. Okay, so we gotta move it a little bit, but that's pretty damn good if I do say so myself. So how many blocks is it off by? Uh, two. Let's move it two blocks. What the hell? <laughs> Too much. Okay. Let's, um... There we are. That lines up pretty well. This is one. This is two. This is three. This should be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So what we can do now is um, just connect these, and then we'll go through and figure out our repeaters cool stuff and I'll start throwing these worlds up once we get some progress made um, I keep doing this gosh okay so I kind of murdered our staircase but that's all right uh, we'll hide all this crap eventually and let's remember these are our binary outputs so what I'm gonna do is put just like oops torches on top eventually again remember this is gonna lead into our memory modules um, so, yeah, let's just do one button at a time. We're going to replace the buttons with uh, levers so that we can trace the outputs. Whoa, that was an unintended side effect. We're going to have to move those hatches. Those are annoying. Okay, so one works already. We got one on our... Oh, we're going to have to mirror these, though. That's okay. So you read that the number this way. So this is 001. 
Okay. Okay, two works. Oops. Oh, put that thing away, please. Okay, three works. Molly. Quit squeaking the toy. That's so annoying. Okay, this is um four we're testing. And my dog is testing my patience. Wow, that one still reaches. Is redstone extended or something? That's crazy. Okay. Um yeah, so four works. You can test it. We got one zero zero, that's four. Uh wow, I Gosh, this flying is really annoying. You, like, glide into it, you know? Okay. Five does not reach, so we need some repeaters in here. Uh, so five comes from this middle line here. We can trace that down pretty easily. And looks like it makes it, oh, almost to the end. So we'll just put the repeater right here. And then five works. Cool. So know where we can expect these other ones to start to fail. Come on, dude. Jump. There we go. We're going to replace the buttons back after. I'm just leaving the levers, like I said, so I can tell which one we already did. Okay, so six uh, needs a repeater, and it looks like it runs out right here, so we'll put it... Um, if I could back up, I can't back up. Oh, because I'm flying. Okay. Like that. And now six should be working. Let's go check our binary. Yeah. We got four plus two plus zero. Remember, the torches are showing the opposite right now of what we want them to, which we will change later. Okay, um, so we're moving on to 7. And I just went based on the calculator on my iPhone. This is supposed to be like a pretty common design. So we'll put, it looks like it doesn't make it all the way to the bottom. So starting at the top, we'll put it there. And we got 7, 1, 1, 1. Eight obviously is going to need a repeater, um, and we can put it here, and that reaches, and we got one zero zero zero. That's eight. So we just got to do nine. Whoa. Okay. This is not the most practical keyboard, but whatever. It's a prototype. So nine, of course, we're going to need to replace starting here. And all these, it looks like we just added at most one repeater. So our delay is still okay at this point. We've not introduced much delay. So nine is one, zero, zero, one, which is eight plus one, which is nine. Cool. So we got our keypad hooked up to our, um, our encoder. Now I think what I'm gonna do is actually reverse the outputs to go to the back, okay? And the reason I'm going to do that is we don't want the calculator coming out next to the user. We want it to go back further so that we can hide it behind something, okay? So um, we can leave all the torches where they are. We're just going to have the um, – it's going to be hidden right here, okay? And then if we go to the back here, we want uh, it to extend out this way. And we're going to need repeaters in there somewhere for the torches that don't go that far. Um which is pretty easy to fix. All we're gonna do is go and light them up at the end and then trace them and make sure that they all reach. So by that I mean I'm just gonna put a torch on the ground next to each of these. Oh, this is a pretty common thing that I do to check my um, paths for redstone. So as you can see, they almost all make it. What we're gonna do is put one underneath, oops, our uh, eight line. So they all have equal delay and so they all reach to the end. And of course they do now, so that's pretty cool. And with this, the, with the button design, the user is not going to be able to um, put in like multiple numbers. It'll screw it up, but there will be the ability kind of to do so just because, um, oh yeah, we need to run the zero line still. But because it's, you know, the button push doesn't last for very long, they don't have a huge chance to do that. So like, how can we easily do this? I don't really know. I'm just gonna have to keep like, here we go. This is getting better. Oh, go 
away lag. I think it lags every time it creates a new fraps file because fraps, you know, chunks it up um, to prevent fragmentation. So here's our zero line. And what we'll do is just keep this right here, you know, for reference, this is our zero. We don't want to lose that for, um, I'm sure there'll be something important. I don't really know. <laughs> All right, so let's re, re uh, cap what we've done. We have a, um, a numeric keypad with addition, subtraction, and zero through nine digits that now converts from decimal to binary so that we can feed it into a binary um, full adder or, yeah, so the full adder is going to do addition and subtraction and we're actually going to use our full adder to do multiplication and division because multiplication and division is just repeated cycles of um, addition and subtraction. So multiplication, like if you do three times four, all you're doing is adding four to itself three times. And that's gonna work to our advantage when we do multiplication and division, because it's you know very simple. Division would be the same thing except with subtracting, okay? And uh, I don't know that we'll be able to put in like remainders, but you know, whatever, it'll be integer division, which is just division without decimals. So, I think this is a good point to um, stop for now and let me think about our next moves. I'm not going to add on to this without you guys, don't worry. But I want to take some time to plan so that next time we're on camera, we can get a lot done. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I, as always, in, enjoyed uh, working with all of you. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. Keep in mind, this is just a prototype keyboard and a prototype encoder. Uh, I've heard there are some smaller ones that we might swap this out for eventually, but I want us to build this all, you know, from scratch together. So, and we didn't have to cheat or anything. I just had to move this. I had already built one though. So cool. All right. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.